Welcome to the Business of Apparel podcast. This is the place to learn how to start and scale your own apparel brand and fill it with loyal customers for years to come. I'm your host, Rachel Erickson, owner and CEO of Unmarked Street. I can't wait to share this episode with you. Welcome back to the Business of Apparel podcast. Today, I am so excited to invite Andrew Jagola to the podcast so that he can talk to us about his company, Apparel Mark. Now, Andrew has 10 plus years working in business development for the apparel industry. And I just kind of want to mention, Andrew and I are actually maybe what you would consider competitors out in the market, but I want this to be a great example of how people are never really competitors. And if we can come together and work together, this is a great episode and example of how we can all just amplify each other. So welcome, Andrew. I'm so excited to have you today. Rachel, thank you so much for having me. And I'm super excited to be a part of the community that you have going on. And truly cool to see how, you know, at times like this in the tough times that people are bonding together and kind of supporting each other in the fashion world. That's super important. Absolutely. So agreed. And we're going to get into so much of that here over the next episode, or maybe two, if this becomes a two-parter. So Andrew, I'd love for you to just start and tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us about those 10 plus years in the apparel industry. Sure. Um, Okay. So my kind of journey is unorthodox, as I think a lot of people who join fashion uh, come from different uh, dimensions. So I actually started out um, with the ambitions to just going to business school, doing finances, really had my head around numbers and kind of putting together, I would say, how to make a product work or how to make customers happy, just in that kind of marketing field. So coming out of business school, I was really involved in commodity trading, kind of like looking around stock trading. And I really got into that kind of profession without really having anything to do with fashion. Now, fast forward about 10 years ago, I actually had a chance to go on a date. Just, you know, I was a single guy dating around and I happened to go on a date with Kara. And this this girl, woman at the time was basically someone I just happened to match with. We went on a couple of dates and we started hitting it off. And sure enough, you know, it became a full on relationship. And that's when I really started to gather what did I get myself into because Kara was actually a super ambitious um, entrepreneur who had her sights on really making an impact in the fashion industry. Amazing. Now, Kara's background was she worked in Lululemon as a, um, a project kind of leader. She had a chance to work at Lulu in a specific kind of position that allowed her to unlock some of Lululemon's kind of super hidden kind of talents where they she led a fast product team that was kind of um, designed for and kind of tasked to do um, operational jobs that had to do with just throwing random fabrics at them, throwing random ideas, and they had to come up with kind of new SKUs that they think that would be performing well. That's and so crazy. So that really, I, remember, I remember when Lulu was doing that. That's so cool that she was a part of that. Yeah, that, 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 like their lab, they call it the lab. Yeah. So if you were exposed to this lab, you now had access to a variety of vendors, all cool proprietary fabrics, really cool ways of like approaching being creative and also learning how to lead teams and kind of put the pieces together is actually a a big challenge. And anyone who's been put through that ringer really comes out on the other side feeling really good and stable about their skill set. So after doing this in Lulu and kind of learning the ropes, Kara really felt confident about herself, about in terms of like the skill sets, her contacts, the connections. She felt like the next evolution of her cycle in her terms of career is either keep climbing the corporate ladder and become a VP or potentially, you know, even be head of product. But I think deep inside, she had this motivation, this identity that she really wanted to make an impact in industry outside of her direct role just for the brand. I think she recognized something that after talking to so many brands, talking to different people, that there's a lot of kind of gatekeeping and kind of almost like misinformation when it comes to starting a fashion brand, um, when it comes to talking to vendors, when it comes to just acquiring basic processes in in the system. For traditional kind of entrepreneurs, fashion has been 
almost like secretive and kind of held back. Yeah. And that, and then we can talk about why that is. I know it's it's a fascinating thing because uh, me coming into the in fashion industry, I had to learn all of this from scratch, and I had so many questions like, but why? Why yeah. is it like? You know, <laughs> what is going on? And so I, you know, that's another topic. But what happened is that because she recognized that and she wanted to make an impact, she decided to kind of do a 360 in her life. So she quit her, you know, high earning position. She took all of that inspiration and knowledge and she started an independent as a freelance kind of solo proprietorship. So off she went and just kind of opened shop. She didn't have any kind of plan. She didn't have any setup. She wasn't even in corporate, like nothing. She just said, hey, I'm just going to go for it because I feel like I know I can help people. That's amazing. And so when she started all of this about 10 years ago, I was kind of, me and her were just getting into it in terms of dating. And she kind of involved me, you know, every day after kind of our, our dates, I would have, a, she would just sit down. She just couldn't get her mind off work. And I have a chance to kind of see over time, like what it is, this whole thing called fashion and on fashion freelancing and consulting is all about. So about six months into the relationship, she actually said, Hey, listen, you know, I see this growing. I think that we can partner in this. Would you mind quitting your full-time job, switching careers, learning the fashion ropes and just completely going all in with me. Wow. And I said, this is, I said, this is insane. Like we have a, a mortgage, I have bills to pay. I can't just, I can't just relearn. And she said, trust me, this is, you know, this is now and never, you gotta be able to jump. Because you can always, you know, pivot later, but you cannot have these kind of opportunities don't come very often. And when they do, you got to kind of capitalize them. Yeah. So sure enough, I kind of took her advice and I quit my job and I committed myself wholly and fully to uh, working with her. And, you know, 10 years later, this is, is, is a, was one of the best decisions ever made because it really created like a powerful duel, almost where Kara was then able to focus strictly on the actual execution of the projects. So she was doing the designing, the trends, the tech packing, connecting, actual working, she was client facing. And I was in the back end. so my job was to do all the paperwork, the contracts, uh, doing all the, the processing of the invoices. And I also did tracking of expenses, like FedEx bill samples. I also did a, a lot of the marketing, brand growth in terms of website. And then later on, I transitioned to lead acquisition and then working with vendors and setting up all the vendor manufacturing production contracts. So I took a lot of the weight of the shoulders that she didn't necessarily feel like she either wanted to do or had the skill set to do. Yeah. But by combining kind of sources and kind of really being linked together and having a, a goal that we really shared, that's what kind of blossomed her from going and just an, as an independent freelancer into what we call today apparel mark, which is a free, uh, which is basically a freelance fashion uh, kind of incubator where we work with different brands around the world and we help them kind of get their ideas to market from start to finish. Yeah, that's such a good story. Oh my goodness. And I, she is absolutely right. Like having that all of a sudden kismet with someone and feeling like there's this spark or there's this something that we need to grab and go for. Like I, there's, there's a little bit of jealousy here because I feel like that is just so beautiful. And as I started on Mark street, you know, I wish I would have had someone like you six months in to help me too. And so that's, that's wonderful. I'd love well, for you to tell us a little bit more about um, Apparel Mark and what kind of services you guys offer and, and let the community know, like if, if they're looking to start working with a freelancing incubator, what does that mean? And, and what kind of work do you guys do with your clients? Yeah, no, that's that's fair. And and I think a lot of people when they come to us, they're, they're like kind of puzzled, like, you know, what are you? What, what do you guys do? Because I think in general, people are used to working with specific industry roles in fashion. Yes. So they, they know what, who, what a, uh, a designer is. And they also know that you need a developer to make the, your tech packs or they know that you need fabrics and there must be a fabric expert. But what they don't often know is that you can actually, if you are smart and you put everything together in the process, as an organization, you can actually invite individual roles and place them to be kind of correlating with another role that kind of supports each role along the way. So then as a client coming in, you have the entire cycle kind of covered, start to finish. So it makes it really convenient and easy to have one touch point, which is a company that will then handle all of your affairs and requests when it comes to building a product, starting a brand, 
getting your um, idea to market. So that is what Apparel Mark aimed and tried to do. We tried to staff um, all of the positions that is required to have a product from ideation, so designing, concepting colors, then getting that um, product made in terms of materials. So we would source materials. So we would send materials, swatches to customers who can hand feel it. We will then execute on the tech packs, do their bill of materials, do the points of measure. And then we will find a vendor that we think would be really suitable for the particular brand's needs. Now, this is a super challenging aspect of mm -hmm. any kind of operation yeah. because you're almost wanting to kind of, the vendor has to roll the dice on this brand new brand. And at the same time, the brand has to accept the fact that this vendor is also kind of wanting to work with them. And there's a, and there's a kind of dance around MOQs, minimum order quantities, yep. price points, timelines, execution abilities, machine types of machinery. And so this, this whole experiment is often intimidating to the client. They it just to do that on their own. And this, and then Rachel, I know you can speak to this because what yeah. you do is so fantastic as well on the Unmark Street. I, for us at Apparel Mark, we see this as such a big demand that we can possibly do it on our own. And I'm so happy to see that there's other um, individuals like yourself stepping up and really helping the community because we see endless fashion brands and fashion entrepreneurs come to us and say, man, I wish there were more services like you guys because this is really helping me in, on planning my time. And that's what we're actually doing. We're unlocking the opportunity for these brand owners to really tap their time into something that they feel they're truly passionate in. And because yeah. keep in mind, fashion is such a personal experience, the personal mm -hmm. journey. A lot of these people start their brands because they identify with the product. They identify with their community. And that's what they're passionate you know, about. And so they want to invest their time connecting with the community. They want to be investing into planning their next collection. They want to be talking and engaging with the community. They want to be building beautiful product shots and, and building the websites. They don't necessarily want to be handling, spending hours on the phone with the vendor or chasing fabrics. This is a great example of how you can leverage and yeah. a talent agency or a, a consultant, get them to do the work that you feel isn't moving the needle and then do the job that you think you can move the needle because yes, you're spending money on that service, but then you're making it a lot back in your time, your stress, your nerves yep. at the back end. <laughs> yeah, so that's, absolutely. That's, There's a couple things there I kind of want to hit on. And first I want to go a little bit back to like that dance that you mentioned between you know, new client, new vendor, and there's there's a lot of merit in having someone like Apparel Mark or Unmark Street kind of be your middleman because without a level of trust to be able to go forward as as a new brand and approach a factory and get them to trust that you know you are going to hit MOQs, you're going to pay on time, you are going to run the timeline like we agreed to, um, without kind of that middle person to vouch almost for both sides, it can be really difficult to move forward as a brand new brand um, or even as an established brand who just hasn't worked with that vendor before. So I just right. kind of wanted to reiterate that that is one of the trickier parts to apparel manufacturing and getting in the door to a lot of these manufacturers who are right fit for you can be really, really complicated. We're trying to create you know, a feeling for the client to really resonate of you know, the opportunity of, of skipping this step of not connecting with an expert. What does that look like to you? Because there's always an option uh, to do it. Um, my thought personally is that I would all, always want to look to protect the peace of our clients. Like we all have an energy within us that I think could be exhausted if we overstress or become too frustrated with something and we kind of burn out. So if, yeah. if we're doing a task that we're not really comfortable in, or we feel like it's bigger than ourselves, even though we're ambitious and we want to learn. Sometimes that task is just like, you can't learn the fashion industry, even if you're dedicated to starting a brand. How can you learn, you know, four years of school, then two years of grad, then 10 years of corporate? It's, it's impossible. And yeah. so what happens is a lot of um, startup owners come to us and they say, hey man, I try to do this on, on my own. I got burned out, I almost got discouraged. And to me, that's like, that's sad to hear because some fantastic ideas, like innovative ideas, yes. who knows so many ideas that, like right now are completely not being um, actioned upon just because someone felt burned out and they weren't able to move forward. And that's yeah. why it's so important to protect your peace because if you feel like 
I'm at a, on a point where I'm about to give up, there's always a solution. You got to be able to kind of look beyond that. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you can agree with your own uh, examples. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And we talk about that too, as in like stepping into your CEO role, right? Like as a brand owner, as someone who has this vision for an apparel line, it's really hard for you to continue focusing on your vision and figuring out, you know, what's next, what's the big picture when you're really tunnel vision, actually still doing the development work or still sourcing your own fabrics or still doing the day to day answering emails. And, and so that is, we talk about that quite a bit as in, you know, you're the CEO, go be the CEO of this company, allow us to do that day to day stuff because that's what we love to do. And that's what we're here to help with. Yeah, definitely. And I think that that touches on, on my kind of second kind of point where we're protecting our time or we're, we're protecting our kind of space and energy. Yeah. But what I also want to say that we should be respecting our time. So as an entrepreneur myself, I want to, you know, respect my time and understand that, hey, you know, I don't have unlimited time. Time is an asset. Yeah. And I really want to get things moving operationally or just efficiently. I need to be able to allocate time in such a way that kind of moves the needle forward. And if that option to hire someone to do the task just a little bit better than me can give me a result that is better than if I did it myself, then that result needs to be scaled infinitely. Because that way you, you're paying X, but you're getting 1.5X back in terms of just operations, in terms of numbers. Yeah. Why isn't that a good investment? And so that is kind of the idea behind um, consulting or agencies is that they, are, they exist for the purpose of helping you get to your goal. It's yes. so important that the agency on the consultant is aligned with the goal that you have. And that's one of the fundamental kind of beliefs at Appelmark. And that's one of the reasons why we keep um, our vendor options completely open. We don't ever force a client onto a particular vendor. We don't ever say, hey, you have to only use this. We want to be kind of a free agent and allow the client to feel like they have full control, have transparency into who it is that they're working with, and really kind of align our goals with what the brand needs. So rather than trying to make money on the manufacturing or trying to make as much money on their first release, we're actually willing to almost lose or break even in terms of our services just to make sure that the client can see, hey, you know what, there is a real potential here for this product. We can get to market, let's get to market, let's grow. And then together, then we can expand. And oftentimes that's what happened in, with our current clients and past big clients is that that kind of ride to the top together is what makes, you know, that's what gives you purpose as a design house. Because in reality, a lot of designers that work with us, they came from high paying jobs. They had an opportunity to work in corporate, but they chose to quit and, and to come together as a team because they felt powerful, they felt passionate, and they felt inspired to bring other people's kind of products to market and be right there in the driver's seat, helping them guide them. And I think that is something so incredible um, for anyone to, to actually realize and be a part of growth. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I think we're really aligned on that. Like we, we feel like coming with our clients, we're not, we're not just a service provider to you. At the end of the day, we actually become really good friends with a lot of our clients. We become really close. We become partners almost. And, and we become a part of the team. So it's not necessarily like we're separate at the end of the day. Actually, we feel really close to the entire team of some of these brands and, and we're getting together with them on the weekends to like go have beers yeah. because we care so much about each other as we go through this process. It, it becomes a community and it becomes a lot bigger than just a work exchange at the end of the day. So I think we're really aligned on that idea too. Absolutely. And I think I like, you know, just thinking about on Mark street as well, some of the people who may choose to hire a consultant may do so because they want to kind of disclose or just shoot, shoot some information that they may not necessarily be able to do with their in-house team. Yeah. There's certain ideas that are so valuable if you have a second kind of opinion or another person step up, especially someone you also feel is at a, an experience level that you can trust, that is extremely invaluable to hear feedback or consulting on your product or idea or a collection or a SKU set that can actually help you make decisions in your own company. This is especially true for corporate and like bigger clients. I'd see, you know, in, in the past, we've always seen them kind of hold the cards close and only mm -hmm. kind of involve the people that they've kind of worked with in the past. And they kind of really 
resistant to the idea of going into, into the talent pool that lies outside of their immediate kind of yep, sphere of influence. But that is something that they're actually missing out on because that competitive advantage that someone else may obtain, you're not tapping into. So if you keep doing the same thing and you're expecting a different result, you're not actually giving your own position a chance to grow. Because if someone in a position of VP or director level or even head of product, it's their responsibility to activate any assets available to them or, or think of new ways to kind of progress the line. And so if the ways that you've been applying isn't achieving the type of growth you want, guess what? There's, you got to go out there and you got to look for new ways to do it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's why we exist. You know, that's why Unmarked Street exists. And I think those are the services that the people who do find them, who are willing to kind of research them, will reap the rewards as well. I totally agree. And I, I really love your point too, that like corporate brands really do keep things close to the chest. And I think that goes into kind of like the next subject that we wanted to talk about a little bit too, which is, you know, it is really hard to find information out there that, you know, what is going on behind the doors of a lot of these corporate brands. And so there's a couple different angles I think that we could take here. I'll, I'll let you kind of feel the vibe and we'll, and we'll go from there. But I think there's a little bit to talk about either in like, how do we get that information out there into the hands of the people who really need it, who don't have it, they have great ideas, just like you said, and they need to figure out how to move forward. But also like, how do you start a freelancing job or how do you become a contractor without being inside those walls for more than just a couple of years to really understand how it all works yeah. to be able to offer like really solid, good services to brands. That's, that's a great point. And so there's a lot to, uh, to uncover there. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think for, for us, that the people that work with us at Appellmark, most of them have come. In fact, I, I would say a lot of them, if not everyone there came from a position that they've already worked in, in a field of fashion at a, in a position or a corporate level in one way or another. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is because there's a learning curve to being a versatile kind of contractor or, or a consultant yeah. at a point where you feel confident enough to kind of assess and consult on positions of, of brands that are, are worth billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. To be able to do that comfortably, you got to be able to kind of walk the walk and be able to kind of understand what they're actually asking. And so mm -hmm. to do that effectively, I would say that it is imperative to kind of spend some years in the corporate world, maybe work with different brands, learn kind of the language, understand a little bit techniques and tactics that and how things are executed. This will really um, help you not only understand the process of fashion, but also understand how people's minds work at those in those corporate levels and how some of these decisions are being made. Because if you understand how decisions are made, you understand what is driving force behind those decisions. You can bring that talent and that understanding as to the freelance world, as a freelancer, then you can offer value to yeah. anyone that approaches you falling back on the resources and information you've kind of learned in your career. That is what's going to make you a successful freelancer because coming out of just fashion school or just being self-taught, well, it's, it's uh, pretty easy to do like in terms of like, there's no barriers to it. But yeah. you're going to hit, hit a wall pretty quickly in terms of like your growth. And we see and we talk to a lot of freelancers. A lot of them start out that way, but they after a few years or some a few months, they will actually go back and get a job in the corporate world, work that, accumulate the skills that they feel they were lacking and then start freelancing. Because freelancing yeah. is not a linear. It's either yes or no. You can start it, stop it, drop it reconnect and so forth. That's why it's such a cool uh, field to be in and same for a corporate client or any client. Just because you work with a parallel mark or unmarked street this month or for a few months doesn't right. mean you're obligated to stay. You can quit. You can pivot. You can yeah. always, you know, explore your options. But the idea is that as long as you know that that's available to you and you're consistently receiving quality work, chances are you will come back. And that's what often happens, right? We have short contracts, we have long, year-long contracts, and we have contracts that are spanning, you know, five, six, seven years with some of the longest clients that are consistently coming back because they value that kind of work. So yeah, I love encouraging. that. I think that's really good advice. And I think too, it's 
this might be really hard to hear if you're out there, you know, hoping to start a freelancing business and you haven't been in the industry for a really long time. But I think, unfortunately, until you've kind of gotten to yourself to a level inside the corporate world where you're kind of in the right rooms, in the right meetings, kind of, you know, in the right people's ears when it, when it comes to management and making some of those big decisions, it is really hard sometimes to understand all of the whys and to see the big picture and to understand how all the departments kind of function and work together. So it does take some time, I think, to really acquire that knowledge on the job. But like you said, I think it's really beautiful that you can kind of bounce back and forth. And it's a really interesting industry in that way. Yeah, no, then for sure. And I, uh, I also wanted to mention that as you're working in the corporate world, you're also building contacts and those mm. contacts will become imperative to kind of try to get your foot in the door later on when you're looking for clients or for when you're making uh, reach outs. Hey, you know, you can always call back some of your senior leaders and see if they're available to kind of offer advice on how to proceed or they maybe we throw some projects your way. That's a crucial kind of step. And, you know, one of the reasons why corporate works the way it does is that a lot of those kind of leaders of corporate people, because they kind of pass work in their own circle. And so that does help when you're starting out. Now, of course, it's a double-edged sword because that also creates an issue because the only passing work, those they trust, they know, not exploring new potential partners such as Amark Street or Perilmark. And that is our job to kind of consistently put out information on, or build a community, which by the way, Richie, you're doing a fantastic job with the podcast. Thank you. You know, with your joining different groups, participating in LinkedIn, going to Facebook discussions, forums. There's a number of ways you can build up credibility, and that credibility lasts over time. Right? You're building up a cachet. It's kind of planting the seeds, right? And so over time, one person sees you, that person tells another person, then that person tells three other people. So it's like a steady and slow and steady growth. But if you feel really dedicated and it's really strongly about your skills and adding value to the end consumer, that is how I think we're going to change the narrative from moving away from like closed minded corporate kind of hires to more open minded and looking for different uh, talent pools that are available to them to kind of really accelerate their programs. So yeah. And same for small startup brands. They're, they they should, they should have the exact same access with the corporate brands. If the corporate brand is hiring on Mark Street or Pearl Mark because they see value in it, as a startup brand, you should be even more excited to, to work with them because yeah. these are experts that are being sought after by billion dollar brands. Imagine putting that kind of talent pool into your favor. That's going to give you a competitive advantage as a startup over someone who's not, over someone who's trying it on their own or trying to, you know, hire out different components of Fiverr or Upwork. Yes. And I know those sites are, are fantastic resources, but it also depends on your kind of, what kind of impact you want to make? What kind of scale are you hoping to achieve? Is this, you know, a one-off brand? Is this a hobby? Or are you actually trying to make a fashion statement or a fashion brand that you think is going to be really valuable yeah. in the years? And that is something that you would require actually advanced kind of consulting on. Yeah. I mean, I think it comes down to, to like, how serious do you want to get about your brand, right? Like, yeah. like you said, you know, Fiverr and Upwork are, are great resources that you can have. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it might seem expensive to to hire a consulting company um, like Unmarked Street or like Apparel Mark. But at the end of the day, when you really think about how much you're spending on all those little individual tasks, it actually, we've, we've done a couple different exercises with some of our past clients who were doing that and then swapped over to our monthly retainer. And at the end of the day, they were actually saving quite a bit of money because we do so much within our monthly retainer and they're not having to pay all of those individual little fees over time. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's for sure. And I think that's one of the reasons that gig economy and freelancing has exploded. It's because the savings to the corporates is very clear yeah. in terms of like staffing, bonuses, you know, medical, vacations, all of that. That That is for sure. And I think um, as, as we move forward in, in, in the careers and the future in terms of like AI coming in and, and careers being threatened, I think contract work and freelance work will become more and more in demand. And I think the corporate world will ad adjust their own kind of vision of what it what it's like to work with freelancers versus in-house. And at the same time, there'll always gonna be in-house positions available because yeah. brands wanna have control and control comes from every day kind of overseeing them. But I also feel like there has to be something that also pushes your in-house team. You need 
someone's kind of whipping you in the butt a bit because without that, you, who do you hold accountable? You know, yeah. who, who's out there kind of supporting that? And that's why it's so good to have a secondary opinion or a secondary consultant or secondary agency that you can leverage it, that you can trust to pick up the pieces should things fall. And a lot of our contracts at Apparel Mark come from brands that aren't necessarily going to employ us full time, but they yeah. need a capsule done or one of their employees or developer is sick or someone yep. went on math leave. Like you need yep. to plug those holes and those holes cannot just be plugged with a random person. It has to be plugged with someone they have confidence in, someone has proven themselves, someone who has experience handling this information. And to them, that's super valuable. They would rather pay, you know, a premium for that service because by not doing that, they risk losing or dropping some core SKUs in a collection, which is going to cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. So of course they will spend 10 K to protect their three, 400 K. It's just a no, no brainer. Exactly. Um, and our job, Rachel is to be available, be ready yeah. for them and, and actually educate, you know, these brands that we exist. And that's yes. our biggest kind of, our biggest, uh, I would say challenge right now yeah. is how to effectively teach people who are not necessarily always aware of that, how that we are available and we're willing to kind of step up and do the work. And I think just by being out there on social media, you know, unnaturally you have to have social media presence. Yep. Now we're with the world of podcasts, we're blogs, with TikTok. There's so many ways that we can do it, but of course that takes time. And time yeah. takes away, and that takes us away from actually working on a client themselves. And I think, again, it's so imperative to kind of partner with someone or have people to support you in a journey, much like our own clients will need to partner with us to progress their own journeys. We ourselves, much like you and I, we need help in terms of like, how do we grow our own yes. you know, agency? How yes. do we grow our own awareness? And I think that is a common goal of any kind of business, whether it's profit or not. You always want to be able to grow and create awareness and kind of seek attention that you know helps you kind of prosper in the world so yeah thank you so much for listening to the business of apparel podcast i would so appreciate hearing your thoughts on the show and if you know someone who could benefit from it please share it with them my biggest desire is to help other apparel professionals understand the nuances of our industry so we can all work toward making better product for a better world if you would like to connect further, I'd love to invite you to send me a message through my website, unmarkstreet.com, where I do weekly trainings through my video channel, a monthly newsletter, and offer so many resources to help you start and scale a profitable apparel brand.